Alright, we're into the game here. Sorry about the delay. But we're going to be watching DTS versus Quantic, and it's going to be awesome. Um, DTS has been playing really good lately. I've seen them play some awesome strats with awesome heroes. We saw that last game. MTW, obviously, not one of the best e one of the best teams, um, but definitely uh, a respectable team. Um, but against Quantic, it's going to be a little bit more tough. Quantic's been kind of hit or miss lately. Uh, they've been done. They did really, really well against Navi in the defense finals. But since then, they've been get dropping some games to some lower skilled teams. So, uh, not really sure how well they'll do here. But DTS, I expect, might do another interesting strap. But first round bans Invoker, Enchantress, Broodmother. We see a Chin, uh, Lycanthrope, as well as a Nature's Prophet. So a lot of um, strong pushing heroes are gone. DTS picks up the Windrunner as a result, which I think is very smart. If all the pushing heroes are gone, you want the best team fight ganking heroes, and that is going to be maybe not team fight is the best way to describe a Windrunner, but Shackle is amazing. That's the important part. Shackling people to each other. It works really good, guys. Those disables are awesome. Dire Team is going to draft a Darkseer as well as a Leshrac. And uh, Le Darkseer team fight hero, Leshrac a pushing hero. They're actually both kind of pushing heroes since uh, Darkseer can cut creeps pretty effectively in the early game, so... Alright, uh, two picks here coming for DTS now. Possibly support Shadow Shaman, perhaps a pick. Uh, they're going to go for a Shadow Demon Clink, so DTS going. They're going for their heroes, man. Clink's DTS all the way. They, they've they done this. I think this is the fourth DTS game that I've now casted that actually did have a Clink's in the lineup. And it usually works out pretty good for them. Clink's uh, arguably, I dare say, Imba. I dare say it. I dare. Um, the reason it's so strong is because his ulti gives him a giant damage boost, as well as HP, so, and Ice Frog has been casually buffing this patch after patch, and people just kept saying, nope, don't care about Clinks, don't care about him. Um, I've seen one Clinks game that they played where he got obscenely fed, due to his own actions, mostly, not like the enemy team fed him because they played bad, and the game after that, Clinks got kind of shut down and still provided some good damage, because once he grabs a decent creep, we're talking about hitting for like 150 damage in the early game, even with just like a Treads and maybe one other item, plus the Searing Arrows is up to 50, so, I mean, that's a crap load of damage, 200 damage early, obviously it doesn't have any disable, other than that, so you have to pick and choose your battles, but, I mean, there's a lot of heroes that are still very susceptible to that kind of huge AoE damage, or huge uh, damage output in the early game, so... Um, second round bans, we see an Anti-Mage as well as a Queen of Pain. Um, Quantic's third pick was an Enigma, so currently they have better teamfight push. But Shadow Demon is obviously going to make that a little dangerous. Uh, probably going to assume maybe a Soul Catcher max out on that hero. Um, that hero is kind of hit or miss as well. Some games he does see play, some games he just simply does not. Um, Soul Catcher is really good, his ulti is really good, and Dispersion is also very useful. Shadow Poison, uh, in my opinion, the weakest of his three skills, but... Um, some people would tell you otherwise, especially if you solo him in and you get a level advantage over everybody. Sometimes having that shadow point maxed out can be very, very useful. So, um, depending on how that goes. But, I don't know, we might see a support shadow demon, we might, might see a solo shadow demon. They currently have three farm dependent heroes, if shadow demon does not support, or windrunner that is. But, um, the final bans are going to be a venomancer as well as a venge. And venomancer ban, obviously very straightforward, very smart ban, because Quantic already has a lot of pushing heroes, so that's completely natural there. And now it's DTS's turn to pick, so... Did they really ban Anti-Mage after they already had a Clinks? Wow. Um... They really did. I don't know if I agree with that at all. DTS has been playing Clinks pretty hard carry-ish. If they even did something like a Clinks solo top and said, you're just gonna set my carry, kind of like what Bounty Hunters do some games, I still think that would have been shit. Because Clinks plus Anti-Mage on the same team is, uh, pretty horrible. I think that was a mispick by Quantic, so... Um... Yeah. So, anyways, uh, Venge is the last band out of the Dire Team, and they're doing it again, man. They're going. They did the strat before. They did the strat before. DTS. They read strats. They're going to do a Shadow Demon Kunkka lane. They played this against EG, and they owned the crap out of EG. Um, they just shut down. They shut down Demon really, really hard. They they land the Shadow Demon with the Kunkka. They do Soul Catcher Dispersion, and they land a free Torrent every single time they do that combo, and that's a lot of damage considering that Shadow Demon spends about 170 and uh, Kunkka spends about 120. So we're gonna see it coming through. Tide Hunter is gonna be drafted though, giving Quantic some very nice team fights since that hero hope it's not banned. Surprisingly, made it all the way to second round, but currently Quantic has a ton of team fight with pretty decent pushing. The real question is who are they gonna lane against Shadow Demon Kunkka? It could be Darkseer. Darkseer is semi-viable because he can surge and run away from that after he does get dispersed torrented, but he will get torrented. No matter how fast you are, you will get torrented by DTS. It's going to happen. 
Clinks may throw himself on the mid lane, Windrunner top, and they might do a jungling hero, but uh, aren't any major jungling heroes left over, so I'm not really sure if we'll see something like that. Anyways, one more pick for each team now. Um, Radiant team looking for another support, a roamer, or a jungler. Either option would work, but I, like I said, don't think there's a whole lot of junglers left. And they're going to go for Bane. Dude, they're throwing out all of their weird-ass heroes at the same game. They're like, we like playing Bane, Kunkka, and Clinks. Let's pick them all the same game. Let's go. Here we go. So I, I don't know what they're going to do. I guess they're going to try lane. Did they do this before? I can't remember if they did Bane, Shadow Demon, Kunkka. But those are all really... All right. Bane, Clinks, and Kunkka. All very, very underplayed heroes. Not underplayed necessarily. I'm not arguing that those heroes are very strong and need to be played, but they're unplayed is probably the best way I could describe that. They are unplayed heroes. Simply, they don't see play. Except for on DTS. Bane has seen a couple play by other teams, but primarily it's just DTS drafting the hero. I think Moscow 5 likes drafting Bane sometimes, but if it's going to work out or not, I don't know, but... You know, Bane is actually kind of useful in these teamfight situations. If you can just Nightmare or Tide Hunter, that is awesome. It's like, we're just going to ignore you. You're not going to Ravage for like up to 7 seconds, and that's exactly what we need to do this team fight. So, unless, of course, we see like Enigma do some pro micro and use one of his Eidolons to disable any sleeps, that would be really cool. But we'll see how this goes. But DTS pulling out all the stops, man. They're playing the heroes they like to play, and I love teams that do this. They have their own characteristics. They say, we're freaking DTS, and we like playing Clinks, Kunkka, Bane. No problem. Yeah. And Quanta goes for the pretty stable lineup. They grab a Mirana for their last pick as a semi-carry, so that'll be their attempt to win the game. Is a semi-carry Mirana with a lot of team fight and magic nukes. Lots of team fight. They have lots of team fight here. So, how's the game gonna go? We'll see, guys. It's gonna be pretty, pretty weird, but could end up being very wonderful. A little bit of drawing on the map, and then we'll get started. So, DTS versus Quantic. Damn, man. They they are definitely unique, and they still win games. I don't think I've seen them lose a Clinks game yet, honestly. I have not seen them lose a Clinks game. I remember when Absolute Legends drafted a Clinks and they got owned. Did not work out so good. Uh, but uh, haven't seen any other team other than DTS play Clinks. But they have played it a couple a couple times. Yeah, and Bane is a pretty decent hero. His ulti is great. Nightmare is very useful, and Brain Sap is also pretty good, especially when you're under farmed. It's a good way to stay alive, of course. But we are into the game. Scoreboard looks beautiful. It looks beautiful and excellent as well. For the Radiant Team, DTS, we have Always Wanna Fly playing Shadow Demon. Red Star playing the Kunkka. We have M playing the Windrunner. Uh, Goblin is going to be on the Bane. And finally, Jackal is going to be playing the Clinks. So uh, at the very least, they're going to go towards the bot lane to start things off and get a little bit of position and drop some wards down perhaps. Do we have any sentries? Doesn't look like it. For the Dire Team, this is going to be Quantic Rise. is going to be playing Lashrak. We have Angel and Mirana. Uh, Snow playing the Tide Hunter. I don't know if this is Miggle or if Miggle left. I'm not keeping up to date on things, but uh, Link over here going to be playing Darkseer, surprisingly, and Mania is on the Enigma. So Link is playing a jungling solo role, kind of, looks like. So, interesting. And DT is looking for some early kills. Could always find one. Uh, either Banish or Nightmare. Easy, easy setups for the torrent. So, and that's the main reason that Kunkka doesn't get played, guys, is because his torrent is unreliable. It's not as easy as something like Avenged Sun, where you just throw it out and you get a stun off. Easy stuff there. Um, Kunkka is n literally just not played because his stun isn't reliable. And when you compare him up with a hero like Shadow Demon, which banishes somebody for two and a half seconds, gets you a guaranteed torrent if your numbers, if you can count to 1.8 or 1.6 in your head, yeah. And the same thing goes with um, Bane. Drop the Nightmare, break that with uh, Torrent, and all of a sudden you're looking at some, some fun, fun magic. So, Tango is placed for just a second. It looks like Bane might be soloing mid. No, it's got to be Clinks. Clinks is probably mid. It's going to be Kunkka, uh, Shadow Demon bot, and Bane maybe doing a little bit of roaming. He's thinking about dropping a ward, but it looks like he's a little scared at the moment. And yes, Windrunner is going to be on the top lane, so. It's going to be a weird game so far. Enigma is going for jungle. Priest of the Moon is going to be on the mid lane against Clinks, which is pretty decent. And Bane just kind of hanging out. Going to finally drop his ward. And bot lane is going to be Link Link playing the Darkseer. And Shadow Demon will do a little bit of harass on him when he gets the chance. So, Going to be interesting. I think Darkseer will work, will work out pretty well here. Um, might see a cast now. He's just going to get some easy hits in here. No stout shield actually, surprisingly, on Darkseer. And there's the banish, so he may have to surge himself. Take a little bit of damage. He does eat a torrent, though. Red Star comes forward, does the damage. Always want to fly, not going to block it. But 
Look how much damage they just did. That was an entire self plus extra. That was 500 damage with two casts here, one dispersion, one torrent, and just a very small amount of mana was used, and they already drop an easy salve on one hero. So that was pretty huge, man. All right, once again, Clink's priest moon on the mid lane. The arrow's gonna miss from Angel. Jackal did dodge that one. Not the best arrow anyway, so it's a little. Maybe he's expecting him to swing towards that mid lane instead, but it's gonna miss a couple last hits. And it's actually going to be a dual lane top, so Windrunner with Bane up against a Leshrac Tidehunter. Farming Tidehunter, we've seen Quantic do this very regularly. They're one of the few teams that is actually really into doing that. Um, playing that Farming Tidehunter, and then they go for like an early to mid-game push once he does have a hood up. And he does guaranteed hit 6 really fast, he's very tanky, and with Arcane Boots and other things, uh, it does end up working out. But surprisingly, he's actually not grabbing Anchor Smash. Usually when Quantic does end up soloing him, they go for a lot of Anchor Smash, but not going to see that this game, so... And there's the old Searing Arrow Harass on the low armor Mirana. She actually gets some good hits off on Jackal at least. And Link, Link still being very careful. And there's a little bit of spread. Uh, Kunkka does have Tidebringer now, so it does some nice little splash damage. Link has to watch out for those hits and might see Initiation. He's going to back off once again. He does not have wards up, so he's got to be so careful here. And M is still level 1. Bane is actually level 2. Picks up a Brain Sap as well as a Nightmare. So brains have very healthy skill, allows you to regain HP while doing a nuke, of course. It's very good stuff. And Red Star actually gonna be maxing Torrent out first, so going for as much slow duration as possible and a little bit of damage increase. So this is gonna give them a better chance of killing a Dark Seer at least. And I mean if you think about it, the cooldown is great on Tidebringer, but you don't need that much bonus damage from it to guarantee a last hit. These players are good enough that they don't need much more than five or ten to really guarantee a lot of the last hits that they snag, so. Check the mid lane CS so far since the game has been a little passive. Uh, we have Jackal getting 10 and 6 versus a Mayorana who's 8 4, so pretty equal, nothing too massive there. Uh, Konka on the bot lane is up to 14 and 9 with uh, Shadow Demon at 3 last hits, a couple neutrals there, and against them is the Link, Link that is uh, 1 last hit on him. Top lane, we are talking about a Windrunner or Tropos, which is a 4 and 4, so about 8 last hits total versus a Tide who's up to 11, so he's doing okay, but not amazing so far. He can take double range to rest. Double range ish, of course. Bane is only about 400 range here, but once again, Jack will take in a couple assets. We'll do some a couple more hits. Actually, gonna eat a tower shot. Takes a lot of damage there. Gonna have to pop a salve there. And Angel still pressuring him. He's doing a nice job actually trading hits there. Cool. I like this call. Uses the healing salve, immediately goes invisible, and still has good EXP and options for harassing if he needs to. Breaks invis there and does go for the last hit. Does snake it. So another star fall from Angel now and probably does have a bottle. Yeah, there's the bottle. As I'm like, yeah, he's got a bottle. And then it joins his inventory. Forever, and they'll never leave each other, I'm sure. Windrunner does have the Basilius up. And Bane now level 3. Two levels of Brain Sap with a Nightmare. And bot lane still. Darkseer being really careful. It's going to pick up Boots, which will give him some decent movement speed. And it does look like always want to fly. We'll go for Soul Catcher first. And you want to boost up the damage you can do, especially against Darkseer, who's not easy to kill. Invisibility will be snagged by Angel. This could be bad for Goblin. We're going to be looking for an arrow. If he can land the arrow. No, he's not going to go for it. Mania is going to back off now. Three levels of Malefice. We'll go for an early stun max out. And Jackal takes a ton of damage on the mid lane. He's going to have to wait till he hits six before he can get healed up from this. We'll probably spend some time in Invisible Angel is ready to grab that kill if needed, but it's actually be a salve and a clarity potion transfer from the Bane, so that's got to be very, very nice. Ooh, he's going to get disabled, though. I would not be happy about that one. Angel breaking in busy. He didn't know that he was there. That's why. That's why he got the hit off, so nicely done by Angel. So far, actually outlaning the Clinks, and Clinks has such good base damage that it's very hard for him to survive. There's a surge on one creep so that will die a little bit faster, and he's going to look for the dispersion, but not going to find it, so... So far, the bot lane not working out so well as the last time I saw it, where Lich got absolutely shut down. We'll see the banish. There it is. Looking for Soul Catcher Torrent on the way, and there it does land. So decent damage being done to Link. There's the surge as well, and he's going to run away. But taking a lot of damage, he might just want to go back to base and heal. He's going to actually eat his tankos. I don't know if this is worth it, but just took like all of his HP. It won't heal back to up to full. Jackal's still not level 6 yet, but once again, when he does actually get there, he's going to be looking really good in terms of damage as well as heals and a possible gank coming once again. It's going to be always about to fly. 170 mana every time he casts this combo. That's it. 170 mana. Very, very easy combo to cast. Oh god, I freaking clicked on it. That sucks. I guess you guys probably can't see that. I gotta make that non-movable now in sec. Sorry, guys. Uh, where is the button settings? Uh... Allow scoreboard to be moved. Alright, cool, I fixed it. Sorry about that. Mid gank now. Angel does get banished. Stunned on Always Wanna Fly. 
And eats another one, goes for the black hole, gonna catch three heroes, nicely done. Angel looking for the starfall, and here comes Goblin, might go down as well. Does brain sap last second, and Mania gonna pick up the... No, it's a miss! It was a miss! Bane survives, 33% chance for that one. And he gets out, oh my god, I'd be mad if I was Mania. That is very unlucky, the last hit would have been an extra kill. And that was a great black hole by Mania, a very, very good black hole. Clinks had no chance of stopping that one, and almost picks up the double, but man, rough loss there. Anyways, I accidentally clicked on the scoreboard and moved it. Sorry about that, guys. Alright. So, uh, Windrunner now level 4. Basilis with the boots up and not major pushing coming quite yet. Uh, Ryze actually goes for stun over the Edict in this case. It does give you a bigger radius and a little bit more damage, which is nice. The mana cost does go up by a little bit, but that's not a huge deal at all. So... Um, we'll give a better chance of landing the stun on Windrunner, which is generally a little bit more dangerous than possibly Diabolic Edicting. Not that that's a bad skill by any means. And Mania as well as Angel actually going to be looking for a kill now. Radiant Team does not have a ward up, so they are going to be snaking through. There's a double damage now on Angel, and I heard Windrun get used on M. He get gushed or something. Uh, was actually a gush as well as an Anchor Smash, so they will be diving this one. We'll see who goes first. Creep wave is on the way, and it looks, ooh, Goblin actually also going to show up, going to run into the heroes. Here comes the Malefist, and now Goblin might do a Nightmare. There it is, but they pick off the Windrunner easily, looking for the arrow now. A little bit of cooldown mana, but needs to bottle, uh, actually not going to go for it, surprisingly. And the Nightmare is going to go away. Going to cut the creeps just a little bit. There's the Edict being used now, and the Tier 1 tower on top is going to go down to Quantic. Very nice little gank there, shifting that in. Didn't even use smoke, but the Radiant Team, no Observer Wards on the map. They have no wards on the map, and there they are. Finally transferred to Always Want to Fly. This is a slight mistake. A minute 35 late, you always want to reward at 6 minutes, and as a result, the gank happens, and they easily take the tower as a result. If they could have prevented that gank, they would have had a better chance, or at least if they would have seen those heroes coming, you could have at least seen power shots from Windrow to try to slow it down. Snow now pressuring, looking for the torrent. Is he going to boat it as well? He does torrent. Uh, boat coming. Going to do some decent damage. Mirana leaps past, but Mania dodges as well. Nicely done. Looking for a follow-up stun. Arrow's going to land. Five second disable on Red Star now. There's a soul catcher. Tide is going to ravage this. Going after Kunkasil, but the boat keeps him alive. I can't believe it. Shack shot. Not going to land because of the dispersion, but Windrunner does pick up the last rack. Nice hook there. A nice catch. And there's another Nightmare, so they're going to get a guaranteed kill. Most likely there's a soul catcher. Follow-up damage. Clinks picks it up, though. And it looks like Bane is going to grab the last hit with a uh, nice little brain sap. So it's a pretty equal game. 2-2 two to two so far. But Dire Team in a little bit of an advantage. About 1,300 gold here. In the meantime, Mania back on the mid lane with Angel. Angel does have a bottle, so he's going to be looking for a bottle, a rune. And he's going to find the haste. Did spawn about 40 seconds ago. In the meantime, Link finally getting some much needed solo EXP in the bot lane. Picks up the headdress first. I like this choice. Um, some players generally go for... I don't know if he's getting a mech or a hood, but either option does require the headdress, and it's a decent regen over time item, so it'd be kind of fun to see that be used. Always want to fly, barely dodging a star storm. Once again, he's level 4, so still not 6 yet. Does need to pick up that level 6 before he does become very, very useful as a support hero. If he can land an arrow, uh, they could get a kill, but Leshrac's still not level 6 either, so. Group Wave will be pulled past now. Um, Jackal in the jungle, level 8. Still has not picked up a strafe yet, but he likes picking up a lot of early levels of Skeleton Walk, and that's for good reason, because it does increase your movement speed, so even if you do get ganked by something like a smoke, you're pretty survivable as a result. So, Anyways, Clink's in the jungle, gonna pick up a... that was a Satyr, boosting up his HP to 1200, his damage up to 126 base. We're talking about a lot of damage here. And he's gonna go for an Oblivion Staff, so we'll be going for an Orchid that'll be very useful against a lot of these heroes, actually. Pretty much all these heroes will be useful to silence them. I mean, look at that. He's hitting for 145 here. That's just three casual assets. He literally spent, I mean, 100 mana on Death Pact, and that was about uh, 24 mana on Searing Arrows, and he can hit Tide casually with three hits for 450 damage. That's ridiculous. That's that's the power of Clink's guys. And you may say be saying, like, oh, he's not that amazingly strong, but, like, his damage is so high. I mean, I used to talk shit about Clinks all the time, but his damage is just so easy. It's so easy to boost it up. That is very scary. Arrow is going to be dodged by him. He's too good for that one. And Angel not going to get the free kill. He's got a double damage up. And Link's still trying to defend the bot lane. Hasn't been pushed too heavily. The Kunkka um, Shadow Demon lane worked okay, but never really got a kill, which is a little surprising. That happened in the past, at least. Got a Ring of Health. Phase boots for better damage and positioning. And Link's going to continue defending this one for sure. So, and who else is there? Mania is going to be on the bot lane, so he's going for mech, so I guess this is for sure. Uh, Link is going to be back grabbing 
a uh, hood instead. He actually goes vacuum first. A little interesting, but if you look at the matchup, he's looking for the torrent. It looks like he almost threw it, but did not go for it. So he's going vacuum first. That way he can vacuum into things like black holes. Snow comes through. That's going to be a gush on Koko, but he does have phase boots, so he's pretty fast. There's the vacuum now. Always want to fly in some trouble. There's the... Uh, nice ultis as well from Konka. Does good damage to Tidehunter, who will still chase now, but always want to fly. Does get picked off by the Anchor Smash. And a great little gank from Quantic does pick up a kill. They worked hard for that one, but they did get it. Angel trying to pressure down the Windrunner as well. Power Shot's going to miss there. And yeah, that was very nice. I like the fact that he's maxing vacuum first. That's pretty cool. The radius does get vastly increased. And if you can throw them a lot of heroes into something, even like a Leshrac Stunner, things like that, that's pretty hard to do, but even still. Um, throw them all into a black hole, throw them into Ravage, stuff like that, catch them out of position. Um, he hasn't really been getting, he hasn't, he isn't really tanky enough to get a lot of uh, usefulness out of Iron Shell anyways, so I think just keeping it at level 1 has been pretty smart so far by Link. But Red Star continuing to get last hits, probably is going to grab a Vanguard there. Vanguard's pretty, uh, pretty common item build. He also went 2x as well as Torrent, that way he can actually solo Torrent people. Very smart choice. And Goblin now bringing himself a TP score level 5, picks up a stat level as well, as you can see, and a lot of just general stat things. Very nice uh, item so far by him. His HP is actually pretty healthy. Angel goes to the high ground, does a Starfall, one more last hit, and he's going to end up surviving, but was just trying to focus him down a little bit. Might be going for the gank. Gush on Konka now. There's a Malefest. He's in a lot of trouble. Eidolons will do some damage. He still does not have his Vanguard. Might change targets. And that's the final stun. He's actually used a Black Hole, surprisingly. Buys a Claymore. Buys a TP scroll. Loses his uh, 200 gold there. And once again, more gold coming for Quantic. So nicely done so far. Darkseer gets that last hit. It's going to put him a little bit closer to that hood, which he's still quite far away from. But uh, even still, pretty good gank. Is the Black Hole worth it? I guess probably. It makes that kill a lot more carefree. Just was an easy kill at that point. Um, he would have had a chance to run away, so... But spends it, gets the kill, they have the hero advantage, and they go for the tower now, so... It's looking pretty good for them. And they will take off the bot tower, so... This is their slight team fight and pushing advantage that they had. Tide didn't use his Ravage either, so not a huge loss for them. They can still team fight, and Black Hole is probably, this early in the game, the less useful of the two skills, so I think that was a good trade. They still have the team fight, and they're gonna push towards the tier 2 now. Thousand gold up on Link, he's got his vacuum ready to go. Not a whole lot of mana, but just a Basilius for that. And Power Shot will slow things down just a little bit. Eidolons pinging from range. Always sunny, still, or always want to fly. Sorry, he's still not level 6, so. Um, no Demonic Purge. One of the best abilities. There's a Vacuum looking for the Rabbit. He's going to catch two heroes only. But, yes, Shadow Demon Dry dies immediately. The boat's coming through. Not going to land on anybody there. Gives Red Star a little bit of a buff here, but... Thus far, not looking too good for DTS Quantic. Is great ganking in team fights so far. They have taken a slight advantage, I'm sure. Yes, they have with some good ganking. There's the going in gush as well as the vacuum. No black hole at this moment. Great fiends grip on Quantic Link, and that's going to disable for quite all. But the stun, no less red goes down immediately. Or Clinks is hitting so hard, hitting for about 230, and they look to be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to jack the uh, nightmare back, trying to let the priest moon get the kill. Great banish from always want to fly, and Clinks is finally doing some decent hits been doing a lot of attacks since then and a little bit of shadow poison will give them vision of tidehunter it is casted already and that is gonna be quantex disengaged so they did a decent job there but a great fiend's grip on the uh, darkseer prevents him from casting a whole lot he's down to nine or thousand gold actually we'll see if he picks up an arcane boots i think this would be a good game for that if he doesn't have soul ring but pretty good defense from dts a little sloppy and quantic perhaps overextending themselves a little bit especially when their big team fight ultis were on cooldown both tide ravage and mirana apparently gets a kill uh, was this an arrow or something? I, I guess I can't check, but I, I'm assuming that was an arrow land as well as a starfall kill. So, so far, Angel played really, really well on Mirana, so great plays. Arcade Boots on Leshrac now. He's very, very squishy. Definitely easy for uh, Cleeks to get that kill, but Shadow Demon's still not level 6 yet. Very surprising, but when he does grab that, he will be able to use that against anybody that's out of position, and the Edict might get the kill. No, he's going to use the Glyph, so. Cleeks taking a little bit of AoE. Uh, that was a Gush, apparently. He's level 12 now, so there's the Orchid. Orchid is finished, just boots up. It's probably going to be... He actually does have a buff from uh, Neutral Creep, so he's going to be looking for a solo kill here. Can definitely kill a lot of heroes, especially with Strafe up now. 6% uh, attack speed duration. There's the Arrow Miss, and Angel actually might pressure this. There's the Silence, there's the Dispersion. A little bit of miss time here, but they will be able to get good damage. Awesome Shackles! Whoa, wow, that was a lot of damage. Plus 400 being done there with that Soul Catcher. Boosting up Clinks' damage to huge numbers. And Clinks, or I'm sorry, Tidehunter continuing to solo bot lane, about to finish his hood, which will give him great survivability as well as regen. DTS will back off from that successful gank, I guess. Uh, Clinks going in the jungle now. And there he goes. Healing back up, 1,500 HP, and a lot of damage as well, 180. 
so it's looking strong. Still a hundred, a thousand five hundred gold advantage for Quantic. Not bad by any means, and it looks like they might want to go gank towards the top lane. Gonna send always want to fly in the way. Does drop a ward down, and Mania still being very careful. Picks up a really fast gem here, as well as Dust. So he's spending a lot of money to try to counter this Clinks. He does not want to get ganked by that hero, and Gem is gonna go a long ways towards helping that. And, oh, it looks like Leshrac will deny. The regen might get ulti. This could be really bad for Leshrac here. He's going to be a little slow, but there's the Fiend's Grip. More Shadow Poison, and we might see him die. Nice Ravage by Tide Hunter. Breaks the Initiation Goblin Wall as well. Looking for a Vacuum. Not, it's actually on cooldown here. And an awesome Torrent Boat coming through. Going to hit two, three heroes, two heroes. Mania taking damage as well. Looking for the arrow, and he's just going to Black Hole Soul here. Goes on the Clinks. They pick off the kill. Absolutely great choice by Mania there. And Clinks goes down. Was looking for the team fight. His ulti was probably... Uh, he did actually use it, apparently, so was probably full HP, but took a lot of nukes there and gets dropped off. Great decision-making by Mania so far. He's been solo ulting a lot of heroes, but it is so important to pick off the enemy hard carries this early into the game. M is going to back off. Mid-tower goes down, and Quantic is looking at a two-tower advantage, and they have picked off Clinks multiple times now. One, one, all right, one time, sorry. <laughs> one, one, and four, but even still, picking off huge important heroes. They dropped M, two deaths on him, Kunkka, two deaths, and those are the heroes they want to shut down. Clinks as well as the Kunkka. They have the most carry potential for the Radiant team, so trading solo black holes on those heroes is absolutely worth it. And there's the hood finished for Tidehunter. You know, maybe maybe uh, Darkseer is just not going to get a hood since uh, obviously Tidehunter is going for that. So I guess he's just going to sit on a headdress. He does pick up uh, the Arcane Boots. Does need something tanky. Maybe something like a Vanguard would be the way to go, but Angel is, uh, I don't know what was just transferred there. Not a whole lot. But he does have phase boots up. As well as that Yasha going to be looking for an Admiral. Admiral going for a Battle Fury. And Angel almost spotting him. Oh, is he going to make it out? Oh, he runs into him. So there's the Vision. Does finally spot it. He's going to be using phase boots trying to get out. He's going to go for the Juke here. Arrow is going to scout things out. He's looking for the TP. And the Malefice is going to stop him. So Red Star will be killed. Guaranteed. Nice pick up by Quantic. I guess they were just looking for me. He didn't end up TPing out, so he ends up going down. Uh, he did have the TP scroll. Could have probably TP'd. If he would have just TP'd over here, it would have been fine. But unfortunately for him, if you look at the Radiant Wards, there's a ward up here which gives vision. People go this way, but it's very, very unsafe to be farming on the bot lane in that case because they can just easily run into the jungle from multiple paths and get the ganks off. So DTS trying to push up the mid lane just a little bit now. Clink still with his Orchid. Yes, Tread's picked up, though. And Tidehunter actually maxing out Kraken Shell first. Interesting choice, but does allow him to block a decent percentage of damage coming out of Clinks. He is hitting very hard, so taking a small percentage off the top of that. But, you know, when there's that much physical damage coming out of the Radiant team, uh, absolutely worth it. There's the Strafe, the last hit on the top. DTS finally takes her second tower here. And Quanta kind of looking like they want to take a uh, Roshan, so... There's the stun, there's the Malphys. The chain disabled, but Snow is going to tank this one up just fine here. Roshan only hitting for about 100, but... Big Kraken Shell, nice regen as well from the Hooded Defiance, and Quantic's going to take a very fast Aegis here. Good decision making so far, Mirana picks up that. And there's the Ultimate Orb, about 50 gold away from the Manta Cell, very fast Manta, 19 minutes here, if he does pick that up. And Koka's still going for the Battle Fury. If you guys don't know how Battle Fury works on Koka, Tidebringer is essentially already a 100% cleave, um, but picking up a Battle Fury extends that cleave, so Battle Fury adds 35% cleave, that means as he hits one target, he actually does more damage to the heroes that are not directly hit by Tidebringer. So usually what you want to do is hit a melee creep or a ranged creep with very low armor, and then you do a lot of AoE damage to the enemy team. It's very, very cool. It's a very cool mechanic, but unfortunately for us, not seeing a whole lot of Kunkka play, other than on DTS, who thus far has been very happy about drafting the hero. So he will have his broadsword now, that'll be on the way, and then he will have his battle fury. So good mana regen there, good cleave, good damage as well. Downside is not a lot of surv survivability or utility. Just pretty much uh, phase boots for that, so... But Quantic pressuring the bot lane now, just a little bit. Mania coming forward, still has that gem up, so protecting all of his support heroes right now, very important. And Link actually going to be going for an urn, so a little bit of a weird item build thus far, looking for the kill, not going to grab the vacuum off. And always one of five will play it safe, going to stack up that Shadow Poison, try to get vision of the enemy heroes as well, it's always great for that. And it looks like Clinks is coming in, this could be bad for him if he runs into the group, there will be a gem up. He might be waiting for a creep spawn. He's going to find the Tidehunter doing some decent damage here. Strafe as well. There's the Kraken Shell procking. And he almost goes down. There's the Vacuum. Tried to catch him in that. And a very smart decision making by Jackal there. Was like, ah, oh, I really want to get this kill. But did not go for it. And he knew that the rest of Quanto was actually down there. So almost picks up the Tidehunter. He's going to heal up from this one. Picks up the pipe recipe. 
and uh, he's going to be there very soon. Just needs a headdress. Always want to fly, drop, great Observer Ward. I love this Observer Ward positioning. The downside is that Enigma will deward this very shortly. Here it comes. Goodbye to your brand new ward. They do find the ward, and here comes the last hitting, so... Looking for an arrow. It is going to land on Goblin. Five second disable. He's down to 600 HP. Are they going to dive past? They're not going to. There's the Edict being used. They're just going to be very careful about this one. The Glyph has popped, and Ryze is going to back off immediately. He knows that most of the damage from the Edict will not be uh, applied. Power Shot doing a little bit. Torrent is going to miss here. And DTS is looking to stop. But nice deny from Windrunner. There's the Vacuum. Not looking good for them. There's no Fissure, no Torrent. Uh, Boat comes through. Does a little bit of damage to Snow here, but there's the... Surge passed, and surprisingly, Quantic does not engage there. Looking for Arrow, it's going to miss everybody, and this means DTS is probably going to get out of here. Ooh, there's going to be an X marks the spot. Torrent going on the... No, it's going to miss, so... A little bit early used there by Konka. And his Battle Fury is finished, but Quantic is going to back off once again. They might actually find Clinks here. Looking for the gem. Ooh, they just need one to stabilize There's the Leap passed. Going to be looking for the Arrow three seconds for this one. Can they get the Lucky Arrow? I think he'll still dodge the stun, though. And Clinks will just book it away. He's been he has to play very carefully here. Possibly going for a BKB. Very smart decision. Um, Enigma pretty mostly countered by a BKB as well as Tidehunter and Leshrac. A lot of heroes countered by BKB. Definitely needs to grab that magic community. Said so he can just auto attack in a team fight. Quantic now pushing a mid. Looks like they're still being a little careful to do some dewarding. In the meantime, Radiant Team does not have a lot of vision up. Nice cleave does some damage to Snow, who still does not have his a mech finish. They're gonna take out a range creep with an arrow. In the meantime, Jackal in the jungle. Gonna grab up this Ursa when he is ready to go. It's gonna boost up his HP by about 60 there. 60 to 70. That's about 70 damage here from his ulti. Very strong. Power Shot comes through, cleans out the range creep. And there's the cleave. Clearing out the creep waves, Eidolons are spawned, and ETS doing a nice job defending this one, but uh, Quantic's still ready to go in, so... No new items. Actually, a Blink Dagger up on Enigma. Very good. If we look at the gold graph at the moment, it's actually not that significantly in the Dire Team's favor. I'm surprised it's uh, not more one-sided. Quantic doesn't really want to make this go late game, but, you know, they have the tower pushing in the team fight. They might as well be aggressive. Cleave lands on Mirana. She's not going to be able to heal from that one. Uh... Unless she stands near the mech or something, but Observer Ward goes down. Are we going to see the D Ward from this one? He does have sentries up, so I don't know if he's just expecting a teamfight initiation, but this is actually a very common Observer Ward spot. There's going to be a Gush. Uh, looking for a Torrent as well. That's not going to land. And still a little bit of poking from both teams. The counter push from both teams is very strong, especially with the Battle Fury and the Tidebringer. I mean, he's hitting for uh, about 150. No more than that. That's about uh, 250. So our arrow's coming through, not going to land. They're looking for an opportunity like that. They need to land an arrow, need to have follow ups. Enigma could always blink forward in Black Hole, but it's very, very dangerous to do so. If you mess up at all there, you're talking about a lost team fight. So both players looking for their opportunities. Going to see another Torrent. It will land down on Tidehunter at least, but. Not going to see anybody going from that one. The pipe is up. They could just brute force it, maybe, if they really want to, but I don't think that'd be smart. In the meantime, Jack will continue to farm. Not the best situation for Quantic here. They're probably getting slightly behind in gold, and yeah, look at that. In the meantime, Clinks is still farming it up, so... More Shadow Poison coming through, slowing things down. But... Man, Quantic just really wants to take this tower. A random torrent is actually going to almost find him, but now they probably realize there's an Observer Ward up there, but... Are they going to jump in is the question. Looking for an arrow again. They're, ooh, that was really close. Goblin almost got caught. Mania blinks for it, does a stun. Finally, there's the vacuum, and they take the tower. So, finally, forcing DTS in a position where they couldn't defend the tower. A little bit of range damage, plus the Edict, and Quantic finally picks it up, putting their, them back in the gold advantage in a second here. In the meantime... Uh, Jackal has been counter pushing, taking out melee creeps and going for a tower possibly. He's actually going to leave now, goes for the TP out and he is going to have his BKB now. So there's the purchase, great survivability coming for him now. Mirana finds a double damage rune. Aegis is still gone and the Aegis of the Immortal is still on the Mirana as well. She picks up a double demon edge, sorry. Might be going for an MKB. Um, crit also very good, also known as Daedalus. Look at the item shops here. Uh, probably not going to be a Divine Rapier. Most likely not. But MKB is great if you're worried about somebody grabbing a Butterfly. Daedalus is great if you don't have to worry about a Butterfly and you want your illusions to do some nice uh, critical strike. Something that uh, MKB doesn't provide. So, 
Tide Hunter on the bot lane a little bit. Oh, we're gonna see a Priest Moon ulti, actually. There's the Vacuum on M now, and there is a Sentry Ward up. Arrow's gonna come through, but not gonna land on anybody. Mania blinks forward, does do the Malphys. Great anti-shackle. Dispersion, now we're gonna see the team fight. Red Star looking for the Tord, not gonna land. A boat as well, gonna miss everybody. And this is why Kunkka Man is not always the best. Angel does get ultied by the uh, Bane Elemental, and he's gonna leap past. There's the Starfall, picks off the kill. Great Wall of Replica as well, and Jackal is in the mix. Gonna be chased, but he does have his... Uh, Black King Bar prevents any disable from me. He actually has a gem as well. Did he get a kill? Yeah, he kills Enigma, takes the gem. Nicely done. So, but another chase. Looks like they pick up Windrunner. That is Mirano with the triple kill now. And they may go for a Rax attempt. They don't have a gem is the, draw, is the downside though. Great ganking by Clinks, Picking off the important Black King Bar. I'm sorry, the important Enigma in the back. And yeah, Quantic will back off now. So... Alright, we have Tidehunter as well as the Darkseer shifting back towards the top lane. And Red Star going to the bottom to farm. He's going to grab an Ogre Club, probably a BKB on him. Oh, uh, Klinks is going to find Rise on the mid lane. That's going to be the Leshrac going down. So, uh, another nice gank for Klinks. And he's actually looking pretty decent at this point. Up to 2 1 and 5. 172 last hits. Very, very high farm total. He might actually take the mid lane as well. Angel's going to pressure this back though. A couple hits. It's got to be careful. Angel does hit extremely hard at this point, and his ulti just ran out, so his HP levels are not as healthy as they could be for sure. But we'll see if Jackal goes around and does a little bit of dewarding as he does some roaming. Probably will do such a thing. Uh, gonna wait till those skeletons spawn, most likely, and then yeah, steal that one. So up to 2200 HP when he uses his ulti, 250 base damage, and Angel's gonna snag that illusion rune. Aegis still not up yet. And Mani on the bot lane now, level 12, so might get ganked. Jackal does the silence, there's the damage coming through. Mani has not reacted yet, finally pops his mech, gets blocked by creeps, and Clink's doing his work, man. Taking out a hero very easily. Mania apparently buying or looking somewhere on the map, because he reacted very, very slowly there. And that is not fun for him, so loses the gem to Clink's, and now gets ganked once again. Clink's is going to weave back into the jungle and continue farming here. And that is the annoying part about invisible heroes, man. They can do this so easily. Just swing from lane, coming in to fight. There's a torrent, it's going to miss, though. And he is going to be going for a MKB. He's going for MKB for sure. That way if Klinks does pick up a bu uh, Butterfly, he can still counter him a moderate amount. Alright, Konka now level 13. Uh, still working towards that. Talked about the BKB already. This is going to be an Observer Ward, which they now realize is there. They're like, oh my god, how long has that been there? And the answer is a long time. And Quantic... The gold graph is still in their favor. They do have a tower advantage, but it's still four towers up mid as well as all of the tier twos. Top one taking a little bit of damage from Clinks, but Windrunner does have a mech up, Arcane Boots as well, and probably going to continue buying TP scrolls. Actually going to go for a hood afterwards, I assume that's what that's going to be. Does anybody else out on the radiant team have that? Doesn't look like it. No, no real major hood carriers. Kunkka could hypothetically, but much better for him to grab a Black King bar instead. And this is just really smart to grab. Uh, Windrunner with the hood becomes so much more survivable because uh, her weakness is definitely burst magic damage, so filling that gap with something like a hood is just wonderful. Um, her mana is going to be a little bit of an issue, but she countered that as well by grabbing Arcane Boots over something like Phase. So very smart item choices by M currently. Looks like Clink's looking for some action. There's going to be a Roshan, and here's the back door. He's going to pick it off, so this is why Clink's is annoying man. Quantic immediately backing up just a little bit here. And Rady Team gets a slight gold advantage again, so picks up the Crystallis going for his Daedalus next. Does not want to get a Butterfly because um, Daedalus will make his items go farther and his ulti as well because he will be able to crit off of that. And there's Malphys. Roshan is likely to die before that Clink before Clinks ends up showing up and continuing to push top. Do a little bit of counter push here and he's actually going to focus fire this level 1 focus fire, so not a whole lot of damage, but a decent amount. And there we go, Roshan will drop, Quantic's gonna pick that up, there'll be Angel picking that up, and he's got a Monkey King Bar finish, so his damage is getting very strong, especially next item after this. He's still very easy to get picked off, though. If you look at his HP, I mean, a lot of his survivability is centered around both the Manta Style Split, the Leap, as well as the Moonlight Shadow. Most of those do get stopped by the Silence, but if he does get Silence, he can always Manta Split out of that to disable that debuff, and from there, use his abilities to try to survive. But if Priest of the Moon does go down in the beginning of the team fight, that is gonna be really bad for Quantic, that is definitely the biggest portion of their damage so far. Now she's up to 159 last hits, getting a little bit closer to Clink's, but look at Kunke, he's sitting at 179, so despite being 0, 3, and 3, he's still farming absolutely great. His BKB is finished now, so you will be able to hop into those team fights and be really aggressive. Uh, gunning for heroes like uh, Enigma, or possibly Leshrac as well, who's still very squishy. Only 948 HP. 
and Darkseer actually picks up his point booster. So we'll see if he goes for a Thagnum Scepter. He may or may not. He's going to grab a Ghost Scepter. Very smart choice. And a lot of these guys would be very smart to grab those item choices. But we have double Blink Dagger now. Tidehunter as well as Enigma. Smoke is used. Do they have another gem? Uh, gem, 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 gem. Do they even have detection? Oh my god, they don't have any detection. They have one Century. That's it. They're going for the Gank Man. I guess they just want to try to take a Rax. If they can get this before a DTS reacts, uh, could be great. But I don't know if they will. Did they actually smoke on an Observer Ward? That was awfully close, I must say. They might find Klinks. Klinks has a, a gem, though, and they, they don't see him, so... Uh, there's the Sentry Ward by the Dire Team, looking for some vision, but Quantic might just go for the push here. Stunned as well, Torrent is used, does a little bit of damage to Rise, pushing up, there's the pipe. Dispersion as well, looking for a Soul Catcher, it's not gonna land on Angel, though, and Klinks still looking for an opportunity. His ulti is down, using it on a melee creep, it looks like, so getting a little bit of HP, at least. And we're going to see a stun on Link, but Link will be absolutely fine here. And we'll see how long this happens again. This happened before, man, where Quantic was unsure and unready to push in. DTS is here in full force, so fighting up the hill would be a little scary, especially with Clinks running around invisible. They don't have a gem up. Arrow is going to miss everybody. And until they land an arrow like that, I think they're going to be a little scared to go up. Tide is level 14. I don't know. They have double blink. They just need an arrow. They need something. Once somebody gets disabled from the low ground, you're going to see the blink ends. The team fights will come. And in the meantime, Priest of the Moon just doing some damage from the bottom. So, nicely done. Tower's down to 800 HP at the moment. They're going to probably wait till another Manta style. And con going to continue their push here. they got to take a Rax now because they know that Clinks can probably outcarry them. Especially with the kills that he's gotten thus far this game. He's doing very good. 197 last hits. 3, 1, and 5. He's definitely very scary. Quantic sitting back. 18 seconds left on the Manta Recipe, so they're just going to be very patient with this. Enigma's HP is pretty healthy as well. Only person that's moderately squishy is probably Leshrac, but he does have the Ghost Scepter up. Very important. Most of the Radiant Team damage is actually coming from physical attacks. They don't have that many Burst Nukes, and Goblin's going to take out the Sentry. So all of a sudden, the Dire Team has no vision at all. Please tell me that... Oh, Goblin's going to get disabled. There's the Malphys. He does get banished as well. Looking for a possible hook. Tide Ravages catches four heroes. Great boat as well by Red Star. And Angel's actually very low HP. Does the Manta split now. And Goblin gonna be running away. Oh, looks for the ulti, grabs Link, and in the meantime, Jackal doing some great damage, picks off the Darkseer. Goblin follow up, there's the Mania Black Hole, goes on Jackal. Always wanna fly caught as well, but a nice silence. I'm sorry, Nightmare from Bane is gonna prevent that one. Angel trying to regen up, does great MKB damage straight through. The Windrunner might get the kill, does get him from the low ground. Nice power shot as well, stopping that. We're gonna see a Courier. Whose Courier is this? Free Courier, looking for the free Courier. It's gonna survive while Replica is still down, and we have Windrunner as well as Bane on the ground. Clinks is healing up in the meantime, but a little bit of range damage from low ground. Might be able to grab the tower here for Quantic. They need to grab this. There's the torrent. Slowing down Angel just a little bit, but the tower is going to drop. Clinks wants a kill. Great blink back by Snow now, and I think they will end up surviving. Great plays from Quantic. Slightly winning that team fight, but able to take the tower. Not able to get the racks, but they did take the tower. Black Hole. If only that Bane was dead, man. If Bane was dead there when that black hole went down, that would have been absolutely huge. Would have been absolutely huge. Because that was a, a lot of heroes caught with Mirana doing some great DPFs. But if you look at the gold per minute itself, Mirana sitting at 500, farming the best in the game. Klinks is doing great as well, 433 and 364 on Kunkka. So those are the stats. All the sport heroes on Quantic's team doing a little bit better, but we're going to see a little bit of a disconnect coming out of Enigma. And look at that gold graph jump up. Wow, huge. Uh, so while they're waiting around there, uh, Radiant Team got a good advantage and the drop back down after the team fight as well as the tower drop. So, so far, so good for Quantic. And there we go. Mania is going to reconnect. So. No new items up on Konki yet, if we check the overall items on the map in case we're missing anything here. Uh, nothing that I don't think I've pointed out. Quantic says ready, ready, and we're going to get going. Gem is still up on Clinks, he did not get picked off there. And he's at 1600 gold, I don't think he bought back there, but... Um, still just has a Crystallis, no new items yet. He's actually going to look for some heroes, finds the Enigma. Two heroes in the jungle, though, so if somebody does get dove on, look at that. The Seder Hellcaller throws up the Disable. We'll see if they realize what's happening. Angel's also here, so Jekyll's got to be careful. If they actually had a gem, that would be a dead Clinks. Seriously, that would be a dead Clinks. Into Enigma as well as Tidehunter. Both those heroes are very, very capable at ganking, and with Angel that close, could pick off that one. Clinks does use her ulti, and a couple pings. Angel realizes that he is there. He's up to 3,700 gold now. We'll see if he gets a butterfly. Butterfly at this point would be very strong.
and DTS now pushing out the mid lane just a little bit. Eidolons do not get killed. There's the smoke being used, they're going to be looking for a gank. A little bit of iron shell going down on some creeps. Oh, that's cool, they actually adjusted the size. I think, it looks very small. And DTS looks like they actually want to fight over the Aegis now. Uh, let They can let Klinx pick that up. He can be extremely aggressive. Not that he isn't probably already doing something like that, but... Um, picking up the Aegis would be huge for DTS. Bane now level 11, stacking up stats. And mid lane, it looks like it's actually DTS's turn to push. Quantic's going to try to defend their towers. If they can keep the towers up, they still have a good chance of winning this. And their teamfight AoEs are always going to be very strong. Courier almost coming a little bit too close. Snow will pass this. There's the Fiend's grip on him. He's He might actually crack and shell. He does crack and shell out of it. There's the vacuum. Tide Ravage as well. On the walls. Replica, a huge mistake for DTS. And the boat's going to land on a lot of heroes, but two heroes already down. Shadow Demon as well as the Bane Elemental. And M trying to escape here, but Kunkka taking some good damage. Clink's doing some hits as well. He's going to pop his BKB, but Quantic will be pursuing this one. No ultis to stop this. And a couple more hits. Mania blinks forward. Couple last hits, and they pick him off. Clink's will drop. The gem is coming back. Mania is going to snag this one very, very shortly. Now it's going to be Tide picking that up. Gem is up for Quantic, and not a good team fight for the Radiant team. They ran right into that one. Vacuum wall plus blink tide ravage. That is why team fight heroes are drafted, guys. That is all they needed. They just need literally a vacuum wall ravage. And all of the radiant team just gets absolutely rocked there. So, no vision. Oh, DTS gonna eat this one too. There's the vacuum. There's the black hole catching too. But Kunkka will disable it with the torrent. He actually misses Enigma. And it looks like Clinks drops immediately. Eb as well. Gonna get shut down. Couple disables as well. Red Star is out. Goblin now being pursued. He's got a nightmare at least, but no stun from Enigma. And a little bit of chase as well. Vacuum picks off the Shadow Demon. And the ultimate from Quantic. The mistake of DTS not putting down the Sentry Ward there in preparation. They absolutely get outplayed. Mirano with an ultra kill. And that's a 5 for nothing swing. Quantic going to guarantee at least one Rax here. Possibly two or even the game. Holy crap. Slight mistake from Quantic. I'm sorry, DTS immediately after losing a team fight and being at a disadvantage means they lose up to two Raxes instead of just one. And that's literally the entire... That's all That's all it takes, guys. One Sentry Ward, and you get that far behind. And Quanta can now take a great advantage. They have so many great team fight heroes. I love the Dark Seer, Tide Hunter, Enigma draft. That is so cool. And they were able to coordinate it, so just needed one great team fight to happen, and they finally got it. So that's a double Rax, guys. Quantic may end up backing up now. They have a giant advantage for the rest of the game here. Raiding team constantly has to worry about counter pushing, and if you look at their heroes, they don't have that many great counter pushers. Mostly, Kunkka obviously is a great pusher, uh, but Klinks does single target damage. He can only push so fast, and this gives Quantic so much breathing room. The next Aegis is guaranteed going to be theirs when it does end up respawning. Looks like Angel did end up dying in the team fight, but with the BKB up, going to be absolutely fine. Uh, does have to worry about Fiend's grip, but that's about it. So, Jackal's looking for some meat. He's out of gold, did buy back, and then died immediately afterwards. There's a vacuum. He pops his BKB. They're going to pursue after him, but I don't know if they're going to be able to catch up. We'll see. No leap use on Mariano. Looking for the arrow, which. Ooh, oh, ooh, close. Not going to land, though. They'll be back in the jungle. And look at that gold grab. It was really close for a long time, but finally, look at, oh my god, look at this. They haven't died in so long, look at all the kills they just got in the last 10 minutes. This was an even game, but the kill graph finally shifting very, very heavily here. Gonna see a Nightmare on Snow Goblin trying to be aggressive here, and he's gonna do a little bit of counter warding. Might actually attempt, oh, he's gonna Fiend's Grip, Raid Vacuum from Link now. And Klink's hopping in, Snow taking some damage, he's gonna Ravage, Kraken Shell proc in there. Does an anchor smash as well, reducing the damage of the rain team. The arrow lands on Jackal, and Jackal drops. Clinks goes down. BKB knocking me up. Red Star popping his ulti, but a little bit of physical damage from Angel is going to guarantee that last hit. Link being aggressive now. Another vacuum being used. Mania pursuing, looking for the Malefice, and it does land. Always want to fly. Is going to disperse himself, but there's the kill. Enigma snags that one, and this could be the end of the game, guys. Four heroes are dead for the rain team. DTS calls good game, and what an awesome play from Quantic. That was really good. Uh, their draft was very excellent. Great team fight here. Was able to pick that one up. M's looking to do stuff, but I think he's not going to make it. He does go down. Helm of the Dominator up on Mariana. Her mana is very, very low, but very well played by Quantic. They definitely deserve this. Uh, definitely deserve this win. So that was awesome. There's Mega Creeps. We're going to wait this out till we see the graph. Awesome play. Good to see Clinks getting shut down. But DTS's lineup was cool, but they never got a kill. 
with the uh, Shadow Demon Kunkka. They just never got a kill with that dual lane. They did good harass, but Link played so carefully that he never died, and that is a huge, outstanding performance from him. Honestly, that's it's very hard to solo the bot lane and never get experience, but also not die. You have to do both. You can't just not get experience and not die. If you don't get experience and you die once or twice, you just you screw everything up. But he never died there, so that lane never really got rolling. Kunkka did okay, but not amazing like we've seen in previous Kunkka games. And Klinks did have some uh, contribution in the mid game, but unfortunately the team fight was just too big for Quantic, and that's why they took the win. So 19, 1, and 6 on Angel. He played fabulously, very, very well played to Angel, and the rest of Quantic as well. They played great. So we'll be back in just a second, guys, for more Star Series action. My name is Purge. Go check out GhostyGamers.net, and of course uh, my YouTube channel or Facebook and Twitter for me if you want to follow me whenever I stream. It's Purge Gamers there. So I'll be back in just a second. We have two more games coming up for you guys. Don't go anywhere.